Hey kids. Hey. What's up everybody? Guess what? Welcome to our brand new month and our brand new theme. It's December and that means it is Christmas. Christmas time. Woo! I am really excited. As you can see, Miss Christie is even more excited for Christmas. We are so happy that you're here with us today to celebrate our brand new month, our brand new theme, which is Christmas. Guys, we are really excited about this lesson. Uh, I say this often, but this is the most important lesson we're going to learn all year because everything we learn about all year long all leads us back to the start, mm -hmm. the birth of Jesus, our Savior. Everything else we learned about all year long is because of what Jesus did for us. Because of what happened. And what happens to this month uh, where we celebrate his birth. So guys, we're really excited about this month. We're really excited about our theme. But as always, we're going to start off by praying, worshiping together, and then we'll get into our lesson. All right? Miss Christy, why don't you open us up in some prayer? Let's do it. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this new month and for this new theme. I pray that you be with us each and every day. Help us to keep the thought of Christmas and the gift that you gave us so close to our heart and fresh in our mind throughout the entire season. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we've got a brand new month, which means a brand new worship song. So get out of your seats, stand up, get excited as we sing about Christmas with our worship song this month. Here we go. Jesus is the reason for the season. And Jesus is the reason we celebrate Christmas, which is our 
overwhelming theme of the month. I'm really all about these Christmas lights. Yeah, the lights, the snowflakes. Love the, it. it's, it's It's just, it's amazing, mm -hmm. okay? Our theme actually is light show. Ooh. And it's, uh, Miss Christy, why don't you read that to us? Light show. Let the Christmas celebration be. And we all know that Miss Christy is very excited about the Christmas celebration. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, guys, I am excited too. You guys should be excited at home. The Christmas celebration, it is an amazing time where we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus, and all the amazing things he's done for us. Mm -hmm. And Light Show is the theme of our whole month. Guys, Christmas is our life app for the month. It is really the reason that we're learning about all of this. The Christmas season is so important to us. And our big word for the month is... Christmas! Christmas. Celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Guys, if you take away anything from this month, you should understand that God's greatest gift to us was his son, Jesus. And that is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. Getting presents is awesome. Having a great time with our families is obviously a bonus, okay? But the reason that we celebrate Christmas is because we're celebrating God's gift to us through his son, Jesus. And that's what we're going to focus on all month, all right? So, say it with me. Christmas. Christmas! Celebrating Jesus. Celebrating Jesus. Sorry, I didn't realize you were doing a read and repeat. All right, we'll try it again. Christmas. Christmas. Celebrating Jesus. Celebrating Jesus. God's greatest gift. God's greatest gift. All right. Miss Christy, why I'm not are you... usually on the other end of that. No, I no, got, I, I got usually, really confused. You usually do it, and I usually, but then, yeah. but then I wanted to do it. But now we're going to do the memory verse, and you get to do it. You got it. All right, so why don't you tell us what this month's memory verse is. So our memory verse is... A really popular, very popular, verse. probably like the most popular verse in the whole Bible. I would think so. You guys have probably heard this before. I would imagine John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Anyone who believes in Him will not die but have eternal life. Ooh, sounds like we got a message <laughs> that we may have to check later. Probably from Jesus Himself, if probably. I had to guess. Hmm. <laughs> probably, but. Guys, listen, this is the reason why we celebrate. Uh, God gave us this gift, his only son, that we get to spend, if we believe in him, we get to spend eternity in heaven with God, with Jesus. Guys, this verse is not only the most popular verse in the whole Bible, not only the most quoted vi verse in, uh, of the Bible throughout the whole world, the most recognizable, it's also probably the most important. Mm -hmm. Are you ready right? to read and repeat? I am ready to read and repeat. Okay. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only son. That he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him. Anyone who believes in him. Will not die. Will not die. But will have eternal life. But will have eternal life. John 3.16. John 3.16. So guys, all month long, we're going to be looking at uh, the birth of our Savior, Jesus. But our story today starts many, 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 many years before that, <laughs> where God started to put things in motion to get us to the birth of his son, Jesus. And this story today is going to talk about another baby born, the, another baby boy who was born that would have a direct connection to Jesus himself. And we can see through our story today how God started connecting the pieces that we needed to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So let's pay attention to the to the screen and get ready for this week's lesson. Hey everybody, I'm Haley. I got to say, I am just about to burst with excitement. <laughs> It's that time of year. You know, presents are being wrapped, people are singing songs on the street corner, everyone around me is so jolly. It's the one time of year I can even get away with using the word jolly. I don't have to tell you what time of year it is. But I will! It's Christmas! Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You see, it's 
all about celebrating. And one of the ways I like to celebrate is by decorating! There's only one thing missing. Hmm. Eee! Yay! They say the Christmas lights are bright at Christmas. At Christmas! Oh my, um, hmm. <laughs> Whoa, well, this is a mess. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> How did this happen? The lights were untangled when I put them in the box last year. Are they moving around in there? Oh, I'll never be able to untangle all of this. This is impossible. Uh, well, suddenly, I don't feel like celebrating anymore. Isn't it strange how sometimes you feel like celebrating and then something happens that makes celebrating impossible? Well, in today's story, you'll see how there's always some reason to celebrate, even when things seem impossible. Hey, maybe I could use these lights the way they are. Yeah, yeah. E earrings. Earrings, maybe? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in the hill country of Judah. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth came from the family line of priests. But while many priests made a big show of their work just to impress other people, Zechariah and Elizabeth actually loved and served God. Dear God, help us to follow your commands in all we say and do. And please... Please give us a child. Through many long years, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been unable to have children. Bless their hearts. They must have done something wrong for God to let this happen. But God wasn't punishing Zechariah and Elizabeth. In fact, one year Zechariah got an amazing opportunity. His group of priests gathered about twice a year in Jerusalem to serve God in the temple. Zechariah, you've been chosen. Me? <gasps> to go inside the holy place? Each year, one priest was selected to enter the temple and burn incense before God. Now, with 1,000 priests in this group, this could have been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Wow. Okay. I'm ready. As the other priests waited outside, praying to the Lord, Zechariah entered the beautiful holy place of the temple. Carefully, from a golden censer, he spread incense over glowing coals on the altar. The fragrance filled the air like the prayers of the priests outside. There, all done. But as Zechariah turned to go, bright light blazed up on the right side of the altar. <gasps> oh, a dazzling angel towered over the altar. Zechariah stumbled back. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Oh, uh, thank you. Which prayer? Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. A child? Zechariah struggled to think clearly. It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. His birth will make many people very glad. He will be important in the sight of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. That's, uh, but Elizabeth, uh, how can I be sure of this? We're both old enough to be great grandparents. The light burned even brighter and Zechariah shielded his eyes. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will have to be silent. You will not be able to speak until after John is born. That's because you did not believe my words. They will come true at the time God has chosen. Zechariah tried to respond, 
but no sound came from his lips. These words will come true at the time God has chosen. The light flared and then dimmed. Zechariah found himself alone again. Stunned, he staggered out of the temple. There you are. What took so long? Zechariah opened his mouth, but still no words came out. Uh, didn't catch that. Zechariah gestured wildly, attempting to explain. <gasps> oh, charades. I love charades. Um, mouth, duck lips, open, shut. Oh, 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 you can't talk. Why not? Something tall, wings, um, ostrich, flamingo. Aha, angel. You saw an angel. Although he couldn't speak, Zechariah finished his time of service and returned home. And in a short time, Elizabeth found out that she would indeed have a child. The Lord has done this. He has been kind to me. At last, the time came for Elizabeth to have her baby. Well, bless your heart if he don't have quite the pair of lungs. He's beautiful. Just look at that head of hair. Eight days after the baby was born, friends and relatives gathered for his naming. His name will be Zachariah, of course. No, oh, after his daddy. No, he must be called John. John? Honey, nobody in your family has that name. It ain't right. Everyone turned to Zechariah. Zachariah, that boy needs a proper name. Still unable to speak, Zachariah gestured. Oh, 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 charades again. Hold on. A uh, stick, a uh, carrot, a... Uh, ooh, he needs something to write with. As soon as Zechariah had a tablet and quill in hand, he wrote quickly. What does that say? I can't see. His name is John. Well, bless my heart if Zachariah ain't talking again. <laughs> Praise God. His name is John. John. You like that, don't you, little one? Everyone was filled with fear and wonder as the news spread through the hill country. It was clear the Lord was with John. What is that child gonna be? So what seemed impossible had become possible. God had given Zechariah and Elizabeth a child in their old age. God had taken away Zechariah's speech and then returned it. And then, when John grew older, he would play a very important role in introducing his cousin to the world, Jesus. As I was thinking about today's story, an idea occurred to me. One thing I can celebrate today. So Zechariah and Elizabeth were too old to have children. It was impossible but God made it happen. They had John who would grow up to introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world. Nothing is impossible for God. He can do anything. Here's why that's worth celebrating. There are things in our lives that seem impossible. Could be a tough subject at school, could be a problem you're having at home, or a disagreement you're having with a friend. Your problem could be so bad, you think you'll never be able to untangle it. But if God is able to give life, then he's able to give you knowledge and wisdom to get through that tough subject in school. If God is powerful enough to control the weather, then he's powerful enough to help you weather any storms that come your way. And if God can bring peace to the whole world through the sacrifice of his son, then he can bring peace to your life and in your relationships. God can do anything. So, Here's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate because God can do anything. I'm not sure if God will physically come down here and do something about my uh, problem, but if he can create the universe from nothing, then I believe that he can give me the patience, determination, and creativity I need to untangle these lights. Hmm. And that makes me want to celebrate. Merry Christmas! <sighs> Here goes. See you next time.
So as we see in the story, Zachariah and Elizabeth had their son, John, who would grow up to be known as John the Baptist. He was the cousin of Jesus. He even baptized Jesus. So and cool. John was the person who actually was the responsible for starting to introduce Jesus to the world. And God set all of this up years and years before in the nine months prior to John's birth. Okay. God knew what he was doing. God had a plan. And we need to understand that this, that during this time of year, as we celebrate Christmas, we need to celebrate that God can do anything. God has a plan for everything. And we're going to see that plan come out when we look at the different stories of the Bible and the different stories of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we can understand that God can do anything. We need to celebrate that God can do anything. We need to understand it. And then we need to celebrate it. All right, guys, John, the story of John is just one story where God put a, his plan into motion to set up what we know as the birth of Jesus. Guys, this is not to be uh, looked at lightly. This is a really important lesson and a really important time of year where we get to learn about the birth of our Savior, Jesus. And all the stories we're going to learn play an important part to that story, to the birth of Jesus. We want to celebrate all the amazing things that God has done uh, throughout this whole month. And we're going to look at a new one each week as we go on. But right now, we're going to take the time to celebrate the fact that God can do anything. That once he has a plan, that plan is going to come out no matter what. Because it's his plan and he can do anything. Sounds the great. sooner we understand that, the sooner we believe that in our hearts, the better off our lives will be. All right. So let's pray for this lesson today and help commit it to our hearts and our minds. Dear God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for being able to come together and learn about your word. God, I'm so thankful for the Christmas season and the reason that we celebrate Christmas, the birth of your son, Jesus. I'm thankful for this lesson that you've given us today about John the Baptist and how you set that story into motion years prior to teach us the lesson of celebrating that you can do anything. When things seem impossible, we know that you can do anything. When things seem uh, daunting or troublesome, we know that you can do anything. And God, we just pray that you would do anything, do the amazing, do the impossible in our lives, just as you've done it in the lives of Zachariah and Elizabeth and John and Jesus. And God, I pray that you would be with us as we go throughout our week and help us to commit this lesson to our memory and, and let it sink into our hearts and our minds and come back next week where we can learn more about your amazing stories about the birth of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Miss Christie, why don't you hit us up with that memory verse one more time? Let's do it. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's go right into a read and repeat. Okay. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only son. That he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him. Anyone who believes in him. Will not die. Will not die. But will have eternal life. But will have eternal life. John 3, 16. John 3, 16. Good job, guys. Great job at home, guys. Listen, this is a this is an easy one to remember because it's so popular, but that doesn't mean we don't need to practice it. No. I want you guys to practice this all week long, all month long, so that by the end of this month, we have John 3.16 memorized. It's an important one, okay, guys? So, let's do our worship song one more time today. Let's stand up, let's sing together, let's worship together, and let's sing about Christmas and the birth of our, of our Lord Jesus.
All right, guys, we got one week down in the books. I love it. Light show. Let the Christmas celebration begin. Guys, all month long, we're going to be super excited because this is such an amazing time of year. We're looking forward to spending the time with you, spending the time with our families. But most importantly, we're looking forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus. Are we going to wear these every week? Um, I thought about that. I also thought about maybe uh, having other creative ideas. We'll have to think about it. We'll get back to you. Uh, we'll we will week. see you one one way or another next week with a brand new lesson all about the birth of our Savior, Jesus. Guys, we love you. More importantly, God loves you. And we hope you have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye.